मंडे को नहीं संडे को नहीं रखेंगे क्या रहा है टेंथ इंग्लिश ग्रामर और यहाँ पे देखो सर टाइमिंग दिखता है रेडी इसमें जैसे आप देखोगे ना ये टाइमिंग वैसे मैं पाँच मिनट पहले आके बता दिया दो मिनट हो गया भाई ये अपन ने चालू कर दिया सेटअप ठीक है मतलब पचास मिनट पचपन मिनट तक के लेना है Some students making silly mistakes. 
and then we'll after this table we'll move to model of the race. Yesterday one point was uh, not discussed. It was about the spelling of the word model. M O D A L. I told you in the previous class it was. This word is not M O D E L model. That is an English word. M O D A L. What that is we'll see when we'll come to model of the race. This time let's draw a table. If you have a notebook with you, as it was uh, advised in the previous class, you should have a notebook and keep it. Noting simultaneously. Don't wait for anybody. Don't wait for instructions. Just carry on with your work. Let's see. Now this table. It's very easy. This is actually not the part to be taught at this level. I know it well, but because many silly mistakes are observed, even in class ten and class twelve as well, and even good students. Lose marks for these mistakes. At this word, person. You all know, first person, second, third. Now, one more important thing. Avoid a mistake. What mistake? See, if I write it like this, first, second, or third. This is not correct. This is wrong. This is a uh, Roman letter. This is English. You can't mix two different languages in the same word. Can I write it like this? First or second, fourth, eighth. You know this is wrong. This is not right because two different languages are there. In the same way, this too is wrong. So avoid this habit. Never write it like this. Now, this is singular, plural, singular number, plural number. Now, we should know. Let's see. These persons first. First person is also known as speaker. Second person is called listener, and third is known as topic. Now, first person is always I. Everyone calls oneself I. I am I for myself. And you all are I for yourself individually. Okay, everyone calls oneself singular I. Now we move to these words first. Speaker, first person is speaker, but this is only for spoken part of language. When written part of language is there, is there any speaker? No. That time it is known as addresser. One who is addressing is addresser, and listener is <coughs> addressee. One who is addressed, one who is addressing the speaker is addresser, and one who is being addressed, that is the listener, is addressee. Now, I think comparatively, the word speaker and listener are easier to understand. And that is why it is even common. Even now, uh, anyone knows these words well. Those who don't even know English well, they know these words. So these words are commonly used as speaker and listener, while addressor and addressee are not so common words. They are rarely used words. So let us call them speaker and listener. You may use any of these two words: speaker, listener. Let's see. First person that is always I, and second person is always you. We address everybody, whomsoever that person may be. We address the person by the word you, and you remains common for everyone. Okay, come to the plural. I as plural as we. This is men, hum, you, and as plural is the same as you. When we come to third person, that is. Topic. There is no other word for this. Topic is one who is neither an addresser nor an addressee, but it is 
something or someone about whom we are talking or we are writing that is topic third person there are three he she it depends on gender masculine gender feminine and the other that is neuter gender let us see that you know they hindi this is called bah and this is ve but in bengali commonly both are called bo this is bah that is ve now let us see them one by one he and she clear cut masculine feminine but it as in hindi or marathi it is called nasukle but is this uh, it and very commonly i think everyone knows it it is used for non living things true but its use is not strictly restricted to non living things no non living things in english are considered as it it is a chair it's a table it's a pen it's a camera it's okay it but remember besides non living things all the other things let us see non living things first then comes vegetation vegetation that is vanaspati flora called flora and fauna kingdom planty kingdom planty and whatever is included all that is it it is a plant it is a tree it is a herb shrub whatever it is it then it is even used for kingdom animalia except human beings fauna flora fauna except human beings all the other creatures we call them as the word vegetation goes there we call creature zoology mein jane padte hain and botany for flora fauna zoology so besides human beings except sorry not besides except human beings all the other fauna is it we call it is an animal it's a cow it's a dog it it's a fish whatever it is it even in human beings when we talk about human beings we are talking about except human beings but this time even among human beings small kids called infants they are also considered as it we say he is a child it is a baby we don't say he is a baby or she is a baby no it is a child it is a baby it is an infant it is a toddler it he and she are only when gender is strictly classified among human beings like masculine or feminine okay now we come to primary auxiliary this was only the format now we start filling table actually we are studying verb and this is about primary verb let us start with primary verb then we will come to other verb we are simply going to fill and this is literally very easy this is one of the easiest parts this is actually a part we taught at the primary level but because i have observed so many silly mistakes being made in this part so we are just in short going to see it let's see the first option we have in all these six blocks now first options we have are uh, m e s r let's fill them everyone knows it i m we are you are they are you are but with he she it m e s r three options we had we have filled m once we have filled r four times and now this is the only block remaining and here comes is everyone knows it i have already said this is not the part we taught at this level but mistakes are not with this part mistakes are some words okay let's see this is what everyone knows now we come to past was and verb verb is past in the form so what there is on there is verb past in the form was past in the piece was so this thing now we come to the next which is used in perfect tense mainly present perfect have and has here starts the part where commonly silly mistakes are observed it's about have and has there are only two options had is 
not an alternative had is used in past tense past perfect and it does not have any other choice had strictly had so it will be in all the six blocks we are not going to see it because there is no other choice we are simply getting choices and then filling the exact word have has start remembering you have always seen the word i have i has it's i have we have you have you have they have but with he she it it's has this is the only one where there is is where there is has let's just see one more let's take do does again not did it is the case like have has we have options in present tense we don't have any option in past tense because did is the only word in past tense and it does not have any alternative so did will be used everywhere but we have choice in present tense do and does so it's do everywhere again i'm writing here i do we do you do you do they do but here when we come to this block of third person singular number he she it and the word is does remember in place of he and she it may be name of somebody it may be any masculine name it may be any feminine and this rule will be applied there they will be he or she for us and remember out of these six this is the most commonly used part the most commonly used block is this and you will find quite silly mistakes mainly with has and does they are not used anywhere else they are used here only use of s or es it was a part that was studied in main verb out of six forms uh, yesterday as we have seen six forms we studied first four but one form was s or es form of verb that is this let us use some main verb here main verb i have said these are auxiliaries but now we are going to fill main verb here okay yesterday we saw the word go go will remain go everywhere but just like the word do has become does go becomes goes another word we used yesterday was eat it will remain eat everywhere but when it comes to this block third person singular it is eats sing will remain sing everywhere but when become third person singular becomes sings so you will find s or es is used with third person singular number if subject in your sentence is any of these or it is a singular name remember singular name that will be part of you she and then it is this block if we come to future tense traditional conventional rule in english grammar says shall is used with first person and will is used with second and third person irrespective of its number singular plural doesn't matter but commonly the rule says shall is used with first person will with second or third person but still you must have heard the word i will more commonly than i shall but this is what the rule so it should be i shall we shall yes this is the rule 
but remember in some cases this gets reversed this rule of shall and will gets reversed but that is not in normal cases that is in uncommon cases for example someone is stressing a sentence i am speaking something and stressing the sentence for example i have to promise someone i have to say yes i will don't do don't worry that's short so that time it's i will i will help you this time you are focusing the sentence your accent is there on the word shall or will i will help you in the same way while threatening someone while warning someone while instructing strictly these words not i shall it's i will he said i will kill you it's not i shall kill you because the person the speaker is stressing giving accent on this word so it is reversal even you might have seen he shall in law books it is very commonly written but law books are not so common that anyone can read you can see this at railway level crossing railway crossing railway level crossing not a bridge or fly over or uh, railway level crossing there is instruction the board go written in hindi marathi and english read the part in english something is written there like uh, if anyone tries to break open the gate he shall be liable to a punishment of something like this is written but he shall because this is a warning given in law books he shall be imprisoned he shall be liable to a punishment of whatever it is but that is he shall but we say he will i shall this is only reversal we have seen the cases of will getting shifted here when accent focus stress is given on your sentence shall is used here but that is a very abnormal case it's not a common case this is what the rule is and by the way s cannot be used here like other words every word has s here here there will be no s s cannot be used in past tense s cannot be used in future tense as well if s is used it is used only in present tense with verb okay i think it's much lower this was what we began with primary auxiliaries i think you have taken this down now after this we will move to modal auxiliaries and here we come to the word modal m o d a l i think you have a sufficient time to write this now let's see this level will be very useful you can draw it in rough now but later on this is really going to be important while going through papers ssc papers even in board exam english hl i have observed some good students even i am not talking of average students even good students make silly mistakes of this thing has in place of have or do in place of do or does in place of doesn't it's don't haven't hasn't and finally they lose marks let us come to model of the is now it was the word model yesterday m o d e l is english word model but this word i want d a l in fact this is made up of two different words the word model m o d e l comes from the word mood and you all know this word everyone knows this word the word mood this is uh, even understood by an illiterate person who doesn't know anything of english the word mood it is commonly pronounced mood i mean mood acha nahi hai mood mood kharab ho gaya so that word mood is english word mood these auxiliaries express all moods so the word mood plus all in short is known as model this word m o d a l model otherwise spelling of the word model namuna is m o d e l but because these auxiliaries stand for they express they express different mood that is why they are called model auxiliaries now let's see the first model auxiliary yesterday we saw was shall 
and will. Now you have understood the difference. Shall, will. They indicate only one thing. Future tense. If the sentence is, I go to school, and you add any of these words, I shall go to school. What is the change? What changes is tense. So, what does the word shall or will denote? They denote tense, future tense only. They don't have anything very important, but they just indicate future tense. Wherever there is shall or will, we understand it's future. In American continents, they are very rarely used, especially shall, it's almost out of use. But still, they are English, they are studied now. Although its use is rarely, uh, its use has become rare, and some other words like gonna, they are used, but while writing, remember, when you write something, we should avoid these words. I'm gonna do it. So, you will speak like this, but this is not a formal or official way. You cannot address a senior person, a respectable person like this. This is a very informal way. And never write the words like gonna, gotta. Maybe the writer has written that. That is a different thing. But you yourself are not advised to write these words. Write proper English or any language. Language is in a written form. It was the first thing we saw in the previous class. Language in the written form must be correct. It should be stuck to rules. Now, should this model of theory and this is similar to another one or two now this is the rarely used one should is very common nowadays should but ought to is rare both of them indicate the same thing shows duty you may even say its mood is advising mood Advice. You may even write the word advice. This word advice is noun. Advice is verb. See the difference between spelling. See the difference between meaning. This is a verb. Advice. Even pronunciation is so. So, advice. So, it will be advice. It is used in past tense. Advised. Advisor. It's not advisor or advised. No. Noun doesn't have anything uh, in like past tense. It's verb it has advised. So any of these two words, you can call it advise or advice. Any one of these two words, right? When the word should is used in a sentence or ought to, that time mood is to advise, and these words show duty. Okay. By the way, ought to that time. The minor difference is it shows moral duty. Should shows duty or to shows moral duty. But still, both show duty. Duty remains common and its mood even is advising. Even at home, so when someone tells us you should get up in the morning, you should do this, you should not do that, it is only advising. People can understand that it is not compulsory to follow it. Because it's an advice. Mm. Mom comes to us and says, Tell beta Urja, you should get up. Oh, we take these things very lightly. Why? Because we know advising mood. It's not compulsory to follow. This is what commonly people think. Simply because advising mood is an advice. Okay? By the way, when we use model auxiliaries in a sentence, the sentence becomes shorter. It becomes shorter. And easier to understand. For example, it is advisable. For example, I said you can write these sentences if you want. It is advisable for him to get up early. You are advised. To be polite. Now we are going to use should or ought to 
any one of these two. Remember, when we use a model auxiliary in the sentence, subject comes first, then comes model auxiliary, then verb in first form. It is because after a model auxiliary, verb always remains in first form. Some basic things we should note and we should always keep in mind because if we make a mistake there, we are going to lose marks. This is one of them. Any model auxiliary and after that verb always remains in first form. It's like do, does or did. After this, verb always remains in first form. In this have as an had. It's always we three past participle form of main verb. These are basic things we should know. After a model of the it's always we one. Verb in its original form. After do, does or did, it's always its first form. That is the root or the original form. But when it's have, has or had, it's always we three. Okay? Compulsorily, it must be V3 and V1 in these cases. If it is not possible, what adjustment will have to do? We'll see. Later, when it comes, what changes should be made in the sentence? What are we forced to do? We'll see. But this thing will not change. Okay? It's more than the subject host. Him. It is advisable for him. So, as a subject, he. We have to use should. Come to main verb. Get this part. Get a point. Now you will see. The sentence has become shorter. This is the given sentence. It has become shorter. And I think it has become easier to understand. Even the previous one was not difficult. But now because it is short, we always call short and sweet. We never call long and sweet. It's always short and sweet. Subject, you, should or ought to. Okay, let's use ought to this time. You ought to. What? Be polite. You ought to be polite or you should be polite. Whatever the instruction says, if it is right, you need should. Or it is right when you ought to, any of. Now you ought to be polite. This is shorter than the given sentence. This is what the use of model auxiliaries. Okay, let us see some more model auxiliaries. Be fast for noting. You can't be slow. All that will be revised at the end, but still, you should be fast enough to write. Next one is can, may. Both again have similarities. Similarity in both of these is possibility. Possibility in mathematics is not probability. There's a lesson I think you will know. Probability. Chances in a care. Possibility. The word in Hindi is Sakna. I can do anything. I can do anything. I may go. I can do anything. So these words, Sakta, Sakti, whatever, all these come from the root word Sakna. I can do anything. I can do anything. I can do anything. I can do anything. So all these. I am past tense, but these words come from the word satna and that is the root word for may and can, both of them. This is common thing. Now let's see difference. There is a minor difference in the use of can and may and that is why uh, can should not be used in place of may or may cannot always substitute can. Remember, can shows ability or power. 
When someone is talking about one's ability, I can do anything, I can fight with anyone, I can do this, I can... All this shows a person's ability. So it is can. But remember, me is a polite word. That is why it is used to seek permission. May is always better than can for seeking permission, for getting permission. This is seeking, the rest of the can seek is to get permission. May, may I come in, may I want, even can I? But it is informal. Can I come in, can I talk, can I go? These are definitely not as good as me. I've seen very commonly people like this, and even the students, because they have seen such people uh, saying, Can I? Can I? In fact, may I? This is polite one. Can I is not polite, it is informal way. But formal is always me. May is used for something else, even in optative sentences, also may. May God bless you, may King live long. Such sentences are also there, but grammatically, optative sentences do not have any role to play. But let us see. May is a polite word, so it is used to seek permission. Even it shows a person's desire, that is wish. When something depends on our wish, we say may. Uh, I may go, I may not. Maybe, may not be. Maybe. We don't say can be. This time it's desire. The case of wish. It is Desire. That time the word may is used. This is what the difference. When something depends on desire or we are seeking permission, may should be used. Okay. Suppose you are invited to a party, but it depends on your wish whether to go or not. So that time we say I may go, I may not go. It's the case of desire. It's not compulsory to attend every party or function. So that time it's desire. But when it's ability or power, it is can. Okay. Must. This word shows obligation. The word obligation means compulsion. When something is compulsory for us, when something is mandatory, it is called mandatory, compulsory for us, there is no choice, there is no option. Whatever we are asked to do, we must. Its mood is order. It's not suggestion or advice like the word should or ought to. You should get up in the morning. Oh, but when you must get up in the morning, it means you are left with no choice. You have to follow it. You must follow it. Otherwise, ready to bear consequences. So, must is the word that shows obligation, that means compulsory, mandatory, obligatory. The word used in grammar books is obligation. Mood is even to give order, ordering, commanding as So You may even use the word command for that. Order. Okay? Same as the sentences were used, you are advised or it is advisable, such sentences, you are ordered to finish in time. So it will be, you are ordered to, this is gone, you must, as it is, finish. V1, after model of it's always V1. In time. This way, sentence again has become shorter. Subject, model of three, V1, and then extra remaining words. Superfluous words, you all know that. Remaining words. This part is removed. It has become shorter and easier. So, this is the use of must. Okay. One more thing. Have as they are primary auxiliaries but when have, has or even past tense had is followed by the word to have to, has to, had to these are model auxiliaries and what they show 
is. Unwillingness. When we say I have to do it, it means unwillingly we are doing it. I have to get up in the morning, I have to attend these lectures, then I have to attend some other work, I have to do this, I have to she has to do it, he has to, we have to do it. All these show unwillingness of the speaker. One who is telling you. One who is doing these things or saying these things is unwilling to do it. It's like सुबह उठना पड़ता है, फिर पढ़ाई करनी पड़ती है. This word पढ़ना is what unwillingness. What we do willingly, we never use the word like पढ़ना. कि दोस्त है बाहर पार्टी में जाना पड़ता है. No, we willingly go there, willingly attend the party. So no one says कि जाना पड़ता है. But still, in case somebody is there who is not interested in attending parties and functions, but only goes there as a social obligation, <laughs> that time only such a person can say, "I have to attend parties." Only in such cases, because unwillingness is there. Let us move to the next topic. So this was about model auxiliaries. There are some more, definitely. We have to cover them. These are what we commonly use in language. The others not even asked in the exam. Now, how the questions are framed? Remember, model auxiliaries. There may be a question in your minds. How are the questions framed? In different ways. Remember, maybe the sentence is given, and you are asked to pick out a model auxiliary. Pick out. When you are asked to pick out a model auxiliary, don't write the given sentence in board exam. I am telling you is about board exam. In your answer paper, just give proper question number and then whatever the word. Suppose there is a word must, so write the word must. Should, should, may. So write the word may. This is picking out. Now, if the instruction says. Underline model auxiliary. So that time you will have to write the given sentence. Underline model auxiliary does not mean you will underline in question paper. No. Underline means write that sentence in answer paper. That is, rewrite the sentence. You must rewrite for underlining. You can't underline only in question paper and left without an answer in answer paper. No. So rewrite the sentence and underline model auxiliary. That time, given sentence should be written. But if it is said, pick out. No need to write. Just write that model auxiliary. Pick it out. Write down. Or maybe at the most in sentence form, like this. When sentences were given, you are ordered to, or uh, it is advisable for you. Such sentences may be given. So this was the height of it. Sentences are not beyond this. Okay. After model auxiliaries, let us. C tense. Everyone knows it. Again, this is not the part to be taught at this level. I know it, but still we are covering it so that silly mistakes are avoided and everything should be in your written form. Okay. Get prepared. You all no need to draw a tree diagram and then show present tense, past tense, future tense. No. <coughs> You know these things well, but remember these three main tenses. Actually, there were only two: present and past. Future tense was added later on. Future tense is also known as model tense because use of model auxiliaries shall and will. Use of model auxiliaries is observed in future tense. Only primary auxiliaries are used in tense, but model auxiliaries are used in future tense. And actually, future tense was added later to already existing present and past tense. Okay. Now let us see these three main tenses and their sub tenses. Each 
one of these have four sub tense. The first one that is simple. Because this has got the simplest sentence construction. This is also known as indefinite. Because nothing is a definite here. As in other cases, like continuous, mean action is going on. Perfect mean action is recently over. But here, nothing is definite. Whether action is going on, whether action is over, action is going to start. Nothing is clear, nothing is definite, and that is why this is also known as indefinite. This is even simple because easiest sentence construction. I am going to write a sentence here, an easy sentence we will take because we have to write it in different subtenses. 12 times we'll have to write 3 main tense into 4 subtenses. The first one simple and definite, next one is called continuous even known as progressive. Continuous tense is also known as progressive tense. Uh, previously it was even known as uh, imperfect tense because action is going on. Action continues here. So it is called continuous. Action is in progress. It is in progression. That is why it is even known as progressive. But nowadays the word imperfect is uh, rarely used. Commonly it is known as continuous or it is known as progressive. Third one is perfect. And the fourth is perfect continuous. These four sub tense of every each of the tense present past future let us start with present tense simple present let me wipe this one it comes in between i am using a very simple sentence a very easy sentence so that uh, it's easier for us to understand say i sing a song on stage or anywhere don't write the word on platform. Now this word, this sentence. I sing a song every morning, every evening, whatever. These will be extra superfluous words. Remaining words do not play a direct role when we change tense. What is important? The most important is of course verb. This is action word. Action, main verb. Action word. This is doer of the action. The word doer. Do and doer. Pronounce the word properly. Doer. Doer of the action is what we call subject. This is subject because it performs this action. It does the action. So this is subject and object or complement. This time it's object. When you ask what or whom to name verb and get an answer, that is what it is object. We will see this in voice. When we will study voice, that time we will we'll see this in more details. But let us see this time. This is object, complement, whatever it is and then extra words. I am not going to write them. These are the most important things. The others are the most important is verb. The others we will have to write as it is. 12 times we will write and previous passage of time. But remember, even if it is a very long sentence, don't get afraid. All the others will be just remaining words and they will be as they are. Okay? Now, when we change this to, this is simple present, present indefinite. Now we bring it to present continuous or present progressive. Remember, subject and object. Or complement, or remaining words, extra words, superfluous words. They are written as they are. No change. What changes is verb. And that is why we studied this in details. Even when it was word class, when it was part of speech, we studied, we focused, we stressed verb. This is the reason. Now you can see the reason is evident. Still, sing in continuous. Continuous key pehchan. 
इसका आइडेंटिटी कार्ड आई एन जी आई एन जी कैन नेवर बी रिमूव इफ इट इज कंटिन्यूस और प्रोग्रेसिव टेंस इवन वेन वो स्टडी वॉइस इफ यू चेंज इट्स वॉइस यू कांट रिमूव आई एन जी Even when will change its narration, you can't remove ing. If ing is removed, it is no more continuous. It is no more progressive. So this is the sentence. But now something is missing. This is not a complete sentence as the previous one. This is simple subject, verb, object. The easiest one at the primary level, object or complement, whatever. At the primary level. the sentence that is taught is this and that is why it is called simple now we come to continuous tense now remember something is needed here because singing verb in ing form is <coughs> verb in ing form is present participle that is be for that means weak form of verb and it needs a help and that help is provided by helping verb in this tense present continuous or present progressive we have three options am is are previously in that table we began with this we had three options for the first time am is are with i it's am it was written in the table if we change subject if it is you are she is he is we are they are everything is written that way okay now this is what present continuous or progressive tense when we come to perfect i perfect means use of have use of has present perfect past perfect is have has and its past is had not had here it's only have or has i have it was in the table by the way if it is she has he has okay let's see what is have what is has i have or he has whatever after have has had it was written here up after have has or had it must be v3 sing sang sung a song remains common as it is what changes is verb it was sing it was am singing it has become have sung and now for perfect continuous tense remember continuous mean action is going on and perfect mean action is essentially over when we come this is called uh, समान वर्तमान का दिस अपूर्ण वर्तमान का पूर्ण वर्तमान का एंड नाउ पूर्ण अपूर्ण दिस इज पैराडॉक्सिकल इट विल बी आइडर पूर्ण और अपूर्ण हाउ कैन द सेम थिंग बी रिपेयर पूर्ण एंड अपूर्ण एट द सेम टाइम बट बिकॉज दिस टेंस इज ऑल इन एक्सिस्टेंस वेरी स्ट्रेंज How can something be in continuation and over? Here it's over. I have sung the song. It's a great song. मैं गाना गा चुका हूँ, गा रहा हूँ. Either गा रहा हूँ और गा चुका हूँ. How can both be simultaneously there? And that is what happens in this sentence. This is a sentence that has धर्म संकट. How? Let's see. It's perfect. So have. It's continuous. ing can't be removed. A song as it is, subject as it is, object complement many words as they are. Okay, what changes is verb. Have singing is just impossible because after have, has, or had, it is v3. It must be v3. In this case, it was there, but. How to use V3 here? If you use V3, sung, I have sung, it will become present perfect tense. It will not remain continuous. If it is continuous, I and she must be there. And this is what we call thermosankat. And whenever there is thermosankat, 
रिमेम्बर संकट मोचन समथिंग और समवन दैट विल सॉल्व आर प्रॉब्लम एंड दिस इज अ क्रूशियल प्रॉब्लम दिस इज अ वेरी सीरियस प्रॉब्लम हाउ वी कैन ओवरकम दिस रिमेम्बर शादी ब्याह में होता है फूफा जी आ गए चाचा जी नहीं सुन रहे हैं दोनों को मनाना है वी नीड समथिंग वी नीड अ वर्ड दैट विल एडजस्ट विद दिस समथिंग दैट विल बी नीड थर्ड फॉर्म दिस कैन नॉट बी चेंज टू थर्ड आई एन जी कैन नॉट बी रिमूव आई एन जी कैन नॉट बी शिफ्टेड टू एनी अदर वर्ड सो सिंगिंग वोट चेंज Have won't change when both are there. None of them is ready to adjust. Now we need something, some word that will adjust with both of these words. We need B three because after have has had it must be B three. Okay, so that time grammar के धर्म संकट है जब भी धर्म संकट हो तो संकट मोचन is B. Whenever there is such a problem. B is always ready to help. To lend or end of help. B. It has four forms. B was, B, B. Remember. Now, what is the problem? It's B one, B two, B three, B four. We have a problem with B three. We need B three. B three, chaiye. Okay. Use B three. And now I have B. singing a song now you can see this is adjusted and the word b does not have its own meaning we are inserting this word so is it going to change the meaning of the sentence no you can never change meaning of the sentence otherwise it is wrong this is present tense okay now difference between continuous and perfect continuous remember they look similar they appear similar i am singing have been singing <clears throat> and singing a song i have been singing a song if you translate them they are almost alike but the difference remember is the word that shows time this is what the difference between these two cannot be used here should not be used here although in spoken language it is acceptable but that is not correct it is incorrect i am singing a song for the last half an hour no i have been singing a song for the for the, whatever, for the last half an hour or any word that shows time should be used here i have been living in gondia for the last 20 years someone says i am living in gondia for the last 20 years I am living in Gondia since 1985. These are not grammatically correct, although acceptable in spoken part. No one raises any objection, but this is not correct. Any word that shows time duration should be used here. This is what the difference between continuous and perfect continuous. It shows when the action began. There is nothing like this in this sense. When we move to past tense, one minor change. And by the way, if you are writing, be fast. If you are fast, be faster. I sing. I sang. No auxiliary. I sing had no auxiliary. I sang had no auxiliary. Why? Because I sing was V one. Strong form did not need any help. Sang V two. V two is also strong form of verb. Needs no help. So, no auxiliary. Simple sentence, easiest construction. Past tense. This is past tense now. Past tense of am, was. Past tense of have, had. Past tense of have, had. Now all have become past tense. As it is, one minor change. Change auxiliary. Or in case there is no auxiliary, change main verb. Pastors, you may also make these minor changes there. If you want a fair record to keep, you may use them. You may write them later. So, but when we come to future tense, remember shall and will. This is what we are going to insert every time. Subject is I, so it will be shall. 
as per rule it will be shared doesn't matter if someone writes he will share it with same is the rule for both i shall sing a song because shall and will are model auxiliaries and after a model auxiliary it's always v1 now we come to future continuous tense it's continuous ing cannot be removed but future tense model auxiliary and after a model auxiliary e4 cannot be written you will be one again another dharma sankat that we used the word we used for dharma sankat when two words mutually do not adjust mutually do not cooperate with each other that time we need such a word shall singing is just out of the question that time what do we need v1 again dharma sankat go for sankat mocha v i shall be singing a song if you understand the concept of sankat and sankat mocha it's very good if you don't by the way if you are not able to understand this or if you didn't like this the best option is consider this as a rule when someone says this is rule we are bound to follow it so if you like this if you understand this very good nahi right? to so, rule as in the book it's given this is rule so okay it's rule now it's future perfect i shall have sung a song as it is no problem with it shall have i will in first form sung in third form after be one this have sweetly very good but in this tense again i shall have and again have will not adjust with singing ing and have cannot be used dharma sankat after have has had p3 it got p3 b this is future tense and this thing remains common for all and these are tense all about this was definitely not the part we talked at this level i have told you but still if you know this was revision for you after this we will see in the next class we will continue that one. कभी मैं नहीं रहा ना इधर हमें बताता हूँ जैसा कभी अपना फिनिश हो गया तो यहाँ क्लिक करना ये रेड आएगा इसको दर्द